We talked about renewing our strength, and we talked about David last week, but I want to talk about Paul and Silas for just a minute. Is that okay? I want to talk about some of the adversity that Paul and Silas uh, faced, and it caused them to have to renew their strength. You see, Paul and Silas were uh, ministering in Philippi. And everywhere they were going, people were being saved. They were getting to know Jesus Christ. And there was this little girl. She had, the, she had the spirit of Python on her. She was a fortune teller. But this little girl would follow them around everywhere that she went. And, and she would say, these men are the servants of the Most High God. They proclaim the way of salvation. For days, she just followed them around. These men are servants of the Most High God. They proclaim salvation. Amen. I'll tell you what. Men will be promoted by their friends and their enemies. Amen. The devil will promote you. But Paul decided he didn't need a letter of recommendation from the enemy. So he finally, he finally got annoyed with this girl and he said, I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her. I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her. You see, he spoke beyond the girl, the affliction of the girl, to the demon that was inside of this girl. And when he spoke in the name of Jesus, he was very careful to use the name of Jesus. When he did that, that demon came out immediately. And there was, there was some masters of this girl. You see, this girl was being exploited. Demons, demons were exploiting this girl. And, and these masters of this girl, they saw that now that this demon was gone, they weren't going to be able to make money with her fortune telling. So they seized Paul and Silas, and they went to the crowds and the people, and they made some ac accusations. They pumped up all the crowd, just like I want to pump you up today for Christ. Amen? They pumped the crowd up. Is anybody pumped up here today? Is anybody excited? today. Amen. Well, they did it. They did it only with a demonic intent. They pumped up the crowd. They manipulated the crowd with their words. They got the crowd to take on their offense and to drink their poison. Amen. They lost their money from that little girl. So they rose up against Paul and Silas, the whole crowd. And they took them and they whipped them and they beat them and they beat them bad and they took them into a prison and they put them in the prison. They put them in stockades and chains and they put a special guard on them. And they're locked up. Their feet were locked up so tight they could barely move side by side in the jail cell. And then midnight came and Paul and Silas broke the silence in that prison. And they started to sing, and they started to pray. And all the prisoners and all the guards heard them singing and praying. There were songs of joy and songs of praise. They were singing maybe, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. For all will sing, how great, how great is our God. They were singing praises to God. They broke it out instead of cursing men. And they had every reason to curse men. Instead of cursing men, they were lifting God up and they were blessing God. They were renewing their strength. They were lifting their spirits up. In the name of Jesus, they were commanding commanding their soul in the name of Jesus. And suddenly there was a great earthquake in that place. And man, I'm, maybe I'm embellishing it, but I'll tell you what, when an earthquake comes, it's pretty exciting. There was an earthquake in that place, and the, and the cell doors, they swung open, and the chains all came off of every prisoner in that place. Everyone's chains were loose and all the cell doors were open. I think we talked about that this morning. And the guard was, he was so taken with fear because the, all these prisoners were going to escape that he decided he was going to kill himself and he was ready to fall on his sword. And Paul said, don't harm yourself. We're still here and we're not going to leave. You see, the doors were open. The chains were off. The circumstances said, escape. Get out of there. You're free. God set you free. But God gave Paul some special instruction. 
And that's what happens after we renew our strength. We get that instruction from God after we renew our strength. Amen? The guard ran into their cell and he was amazed that they were still there. And they showed him love. And he said, what must I do? Because he'd heard them praying and he heard them singing. He said, what must I do to be saved? And Paul's answer was, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You see, Paul and Silas, at the expense of their freedom, they showed grace and mercy of God. They demonstrated Christ. You see, that guard went from a suicidal fear to an abounding joy. And the Holy Spirit used their praise during their worst adversity to make this happen. Even during their worst adversity, even when the devil was coming after them as hard as he could come, these men used their praise, they used their prayers to save somebody, to save a guard that had them locked up. Amen? The guard showed some true repentance. He started to wash their wounds up. He, he gave them some food. He fed them. He served them. The next day, that man's family was saved. The next day, you want me to get a drink? Okay. <laughs> The next day, you know, the magistrates, the ones that locked him up, they said, let him go. And Paul and Silas said, you know what? You openly beat us. You openly put us in this place. You openly offended us. We're not going to leave until you come and escort us out of here. We're going to stay here as long as that takes. And those magistrates, out of fear, they went over, broke the cell, and, and walked these guys out of the town. Amen? Amen. Paul and Silas, Silas left on their own terms. They were free. When you need breakthrough, renew your strength. Worship and pray, and then you'll hear his voice. Every one of us is going to walk out of this place, and this week we're going to need to do that. Every single one of us is going to face a situation. We're going to need to stop. We're going to need to worship. We're going to need to pray, renew our strength so that we can hear the instructions that the Lord has. Amen? Remember, God speaks to our spirit and not to our soul. If we don't do that, we don't hear the voice of God. We only move out of our emotions and out of what our soul tells us to do. He's a God who delivers us. Amen? He's a God who delivers us.